<lacht> so. Ähm. Herzlich willkommen hier aus Unterföhring, der Heimat von meinem Bowling Shop, zu unserem äh, Livestream. Heute sind wir, haben wir einen besonderen Gast für uns. Äh, EBT-Titelträger, PBA-Champion, inklusive Major, Weber Cup-Spieler, AMF World Cup-Gewinner, Osko Palermo. Hi Osko, how are you? Hello Manuel, I'm pretty good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Und wir haben zu Gast äh, Sebastian Hinterwimmer. Er hat als einziger äh, in unserem Quiz Osko richtig erraten als Gast und damit ist er heute bei uns im Stream dabei. Äh, wir werden schauen, dass wir den Stream möglichst auf Englisch halten. Äh, Julian wird wieder ähm, versuchen, so gut es geht, zu übersetzen. Also wenn ihr Fragen habt, auch einfach bitte in, den, in die Kommentare rein. Der Richie ist da, der Richard, der Bench. <lacht> Sevi, hä? Huh? Oh, the bench. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, so, Osku, how is everything? Uh, it's different than what it should be right now, but like, yeah, obviously everybody is suffering for this stupid disease. So I, it is what it is, and we just have to cope with it. Yeah. So you're located in Sweden at the moment, right? Yes, I live in Partille with my uh, fiance and my daughter Ida, and we've lived here for. Quite some time now. I've lived in Sweden for 10 years. years officially and unofficially 13. Okay, so uh, Sweden is pretty much in the media because of the different uh, approach they do with all this uh, stuff going on. What do you think? Is it uh, right? Is it wrong? I can't say if it's right or wrong. It seems a little loose by them, but I, I think they made this decision based on because they didn't want everybody to go crazy. And based on what I've seen by the numbers, it doesn't really seem to make a difference either, either way. It just, yeah. it takes, obviously it takes common sense for people with the smallest symptoms, you have to stay safe and stay home. Yeah. But uh, like, it's, it's obviously, it is really different here. I, in my day to day life without, except the mi missing of bowling, I haven't really seen any difference. I could go to the gym, the bowling center is open. Everything is open but less limit, limited times. But like, for, for, uh, for example, today I was playing frisbee golf and uh, paddle tennis, and it's just, it's close to normal. It, okay. Or closer to normal than what I see in the news and, and, and online watching about the whole situation, how it turns, it's turning out. Can you practice at the moment? I could, but I actually chose to not bowl for some time. And so since the World Series, My last bowling day was 11th of March, I think. I flew home as, as soon as I could, because then we didn't know at, at all what's going to happen. And I came home on the 13th, or landed on the 13th, and I haven't bowled since. But I think I will start actually next week, if the bowling center still stay open. Okay. So, uh, Sebastian, how are you? Where are you from? Where do you stay? How is it? Okay. So, I'm from Germany. I'm playing also 200 bowling. But I started with one hand, so especially you're my idol for that because you also played one-handed and I'm still spare shooting with one hand on the 10 pin, same like you with higher speed. <laughs> so it's kind of the same style what I'm playing. Um, yeah, so I have some questions, especially for two-handed players and play uh, for the two-handed style. But first of all, my first question, um, how much did you train before you became a professional? So do you can remember how much you practice in hours in games? Do you remember? I'll go as much as my memory allows. So okay. I started when I was really young. My father worked at the bowling center when I was one. So when from one and a half to up, I bowled. Okay, that doesn't really count as bowling, does it? But they took me to the center and I rolled the ball. And then when I was old enough, we'll say three, four years old, I picked up two-handed and I'm still doing that the same. But uh, when I was six, I started soccer also. So I played that twice, three times a week. But uh, any other time that I had, if I wasn't playing out with my friends, I was at the bowling center. So during my, I say from 10 years old upwards and teenage years, I was at the center pretty much every minute I had. Okay. The so it, it, was, it could have been from an hour to multiple hours a day. But it, the amount was, it was big. 
Okay, and today, how much do you practice for today? It depends on how I feel. If I if I'm bowling great in tournaments, I've done great. I'll I'll try and go, and bowl some shots like 15 minutes or so. I try and get to the lanes every day. But like in general, if if it's general week in, in Europe, I'm bowling the tournament in the weekend. So normally I would fly Thursday morning and come back on Monday. Then I would bowl Tuesday and Wednesday. If it's different, if it's like PBA events that you're there for a week or so or more, then it'll be about the same. It's just when I'm home, I might day I might day take a day off and then it's back to the lens every day, depending on how I feel, anywhere from 15 minutes to a few hours. Okay. Then the next question, um, what is your biggest weakness and your biggest strength on your own opinion? My biggest weakness is getting on my own way, I guess. Like when I get a little tired and unfocused, I tend to tilt up a little more. With my floor, like my legs get a little straighter, which means my uh, upper body tilts a little more forward, and that ends up being me yanking like all the time. But I like to think that I'm pretty versatile when it comes to a lot of things. Like I'm not, I don't feel often that I'm really good at something. It's more of that I'm, I'm I feel confident making moves really quickly, quite often. Okay, so um, do you uh, pay attention to your ball speed, especially on heavy oil or difficult oil patterns? Uh, uh, what do you mean with difficult oil patterns? Yeah, just low ratio, um, like PBA standard. Yeah, I've, I like. I'm pretty good at speed adjusting, though I cannot throw it slow. It's it's the hardest thing I know. But uh, going between speeds, like bowling short and long, and I'm pretty good at changing speeds, shot to shot. Okay. Um, what's your favorite bowling ball and why is it your favorite? Because of the cover stock or weight block? Is there some special? Right now I would have to say my favorite bowling ball is Purple Hammer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's kind of hard to... It's there's there, In reactives, there's always something that comes close to another brand or so, but Purple hammer is it's so different to anything else that 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 have to be the best one. Do you think uh, since uh, sorry to interrupt? Uh, do you no think worries. since um, Brunswick bought EBI that uh, they will remake the purple hammer? I'm sure they w would want to, but I don't know if they're able to. It's 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 a combination of a lot of things of of the materials. The, the temperature, the, the humidity, and all those things where the balls are made. So you can get close to if you have the same materials, but I don't know enough of the chemical side of that, how different they turn into. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they would love to. They will try, I'm pretty sure. Also. Um, well, it's the ball that everybody's been trying to make for the last, I don't know, three, four years. Yeah. And nobody's even close here. Okay, so um, the next question, which ball do you think are crucial for a two-hand player? Same as for cover stock or weight blocks. Do you have some tips for that? Uh, no, I'd say it's the same as any one-hand uh, power players too. You want to have your benchmark ball that you know what it does. It's easy to control and so and then you have some switch-offs from that one. Like it's... I don't know if, if, if I had to pick one ball, then it might be urethane. Especially okay. for a starting two-hander, not, I'm not saying you are starting. I'm just saying in general because that just make with the rev rate anyway. You can still strike long enough, well, enough enough that if I had to pick one, then it'd have to be a urethane or something something really middle, like a strong symmetrical. Okay. Um, why a strong symmetrical ball? Why especially symmetric? Because uh, asymmetrical, it wants to. The, the reaction is quicker. Okay, okay. And what I mean by stronger is, is earlier. So okay. it would be uh, Verge or uh, any other brand, Idol, Phase 2, okay. or like a, like a strong cement tool ball. Okay, um, what should you, uh, what, what should a two-hand player um, pay most attention for, um, especially for technic technical stuff? Try and make everything as simple as possible. Okay. Because there's so many things happening that to make it easily repeatable, 
you want to make it as simple as possible. Repeatable, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. And basically, like there are a few things because we kind of uh, we can only get the speed from feet, basically. Otherwise, it's, we use strength from our hand, and because uh, we can't have a high backswing, we want to have the ball path as straight as possible. Because every any side movements, you lose speed on, and and if you have to use hands a lot, you're gonna use a lot of more force, which means it's a lot hard to repeat. Okay. Um. In your opinion, why are Scandinavians better than Central Europeans in the in bowling, uh, especially when it goes to mental strength or technical skills? What do you think? What's the difference, or why there is a big difference? I think it's 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 just how we've developed as, as countries. Like Central Europe, it's kind of hard to say. Germany's been pretty good in bowling too for a long time, and I count Germany in Central Europe, but it's just we are more uh, i don't know more focused so more mental strength can, can we call it like that yeah i would say we wouldn't like it's it's it's, it's a tough situation like because you can be good at it in a multiple ways but in okay. in general i i guess you're trying to say why are Swiss, finnish and swedes so really good for yeah. so long even though we're yeah. so small nations But it's also, it's kind of a combination of that, and it's also a combination of that the sports are bigger in our countries compared to. So we turn in, and like, you get good at it, it's easier to get more players that are good at it. Yep. But bowling, actually, the, the last few years has grown a lot, like, in, in uh, number-wise, in bowlers per country. Because we used to have one or two good bowlers per country before, but now it's actually bigger, like, it's out. Italy winning the World Championships just shows you they've had good bowlers here and there, but now they actually have a decent team. Yeah, they focused on it, I think, pretty much the last years, especially yeah. Italy. And it's, it's the same thing, like, we go a little further east from, like, Germany, like, Czech, Czechoslovakia, uh, Czech and all those countries, they're, they're getting in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you think two-handers two -handers like you or Jason Belmonte uh, will still be able to compete at a higher level when they are over 40 or 50 like non Duke regarding to fitness? I think so. I'm pretty sure about it. Okay. It, it comes down to how you take care of your body and, and how you know about it. If I knew what I knew now, know now, 15 years ago, I would be fine. Sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure now. I'm 36, and that I'll be able to bowl the way I bowl in 10 years easily. Okay. I don't because between this age and 45, nothing really that drastic happens. It's all I'm already past that limit almost. That it's it's kind of hard to be in physical peak. So I don't I don't see any there. Yeah, it's going to be a little harder to get to it. Maybe like like recovery and all that takes longer and and, and so, but. I don't see any problem bowling on the senior tour. As a two-hander? Yes. Okay. So how much are you working out in, per week? Uh, I If try to do something every... Like, not on a terminal... When, when the tournament uh, season is on, I try yeah. to do something every day. Okay. Sometimes I did do two workouts, and it, it'll be something in the gym. It'll be a long walk. It'll be a run. It'll be maybe go for, play football on border. But I try and do something every day. Now... With more the extra time, I try to do two things at a day. Okay. And actually, now recently, I've uh, two of my friends, really good friends, they uh, they play frisbee golf, and they kind of got me hooked to it. So now I've played five or six rounds in in the less uh, in about two weeks. But also, uh, when you, when we watch you back in 2004, when you played the US Open finals, you were a lot more skinny than today. Because you yeah. started working out after that. No, I've I've never really done weights. It's just more of my uh, what's the word for it? Like how my body takes care of all the what you eat and stuff. Yeah. So it's, uh, it was just quicker then. Okay. I eat a lot less now than I did then. It's just I didn't never got it in. <laughs> and then <laughs> you also got to remember I was only 20 at that point. Yeah. 20 is still pretty young. When you get to 25, it's start to show what you eat actually. Yes, a lot. that's true. I know it. <laughs> so, okay, two more questions. Um, 
Are there oil patterns where two-handed um, player are in a disadvantage to a one-handed player? Did you experience that in the PBA? Yes, especially depending on which balls you have to use. If, if there was no urethanes, the harder they get, the worse that is, obviously, because it's harder to be accurate when there's so much more happening. Though uh, it's, it depends on which target. Like it's more of, of not which pattern. It's more of when in the tournament. Like I'd say fresh, in general, is worse for two handers, and then it kind of flip flops for a while. Okay. But then when it when it gets uh, really over under, that's also not that great if you're throwing it with a lot of reps. So it, it's a it's a case by case. Yeah. But okay. Basically, if if it's uh, from playable to medium easy, I'd say it's better to be two-handed. If it's super easy, like there's sometimes like on a house or so, if you miss stride and over bounces, like they're an over-under, it's also bad to have a lot of revolutions. So I'd say from playable to reasonably easy, it's when you get the advantage, best advantage of playing a two-handed. Okay. Um, final question. If we, if we see each other on a tournament, can I invite you for a beer? Yes, you can. Okay, great. Not during <laughs> the tournament, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think when everything is over, we will all drink a beer together. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I, I will have a beer today. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think so. After the stream, I will have one, too. <laughs> so, uh, Sebastian, thank you very much for joining in our stream. Thank you for doing uh, our quiz. Yeah, and, uh, I have a few questions. Them. Yes. In general, how much do you practice? Uh, yeah. If if the um, bowling lanes are open, actually, I try to go four, five, six times a week at the moment good to enough, practice. Good. Just make sure you film it every now and then to let your brain know that this is what's really happening. Because if you never do it, then you you will only have an image of what you're doing, but it might not be true. We yeah. must also say Sebastian was a national player in the youth with one hand, so he's. Yeah, He's pretty decent and pretty good. Thanks. That is pretty good, yes. That is really good. Yeah. Okay. And, and Thank then, you. Uh, Thank I, you think, much. I think you stop bowling, right? Yes. And then you restart again with two hands. Yeah. I played nine years American football and now I started with two handed again. Cuddle ball, you mean? No. American football. Yeah, cuddle ball. They don't kick it. It's not football. It's yeah. it's oh, cuddle right. it. Cuddle ball. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sebastian, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Bye bye. Bye. So, oh, I need to change the view. So, Osku. Now yes, we are sir. two, and we have plenty of uh, viewers and a lot of questions in the chat. And uh, I will say something in German first, and then we start the conversation. So. Okay. Hallo liebe Zuschauer hier aus Unterföhring. Äh, bis jetzt haben wir mit dem, äh, Florian geredet über ein paar Themen. Er hatte beim Quiz gewonnen. Ich sage jetzt mal Hallo an Sonic, Michael, Alex, Mr. Schlitzauge. Wir werden gleich die Fragen beantworten aus dem Chat. Aber natürlich vorab, wenn ihr unseren Kanal mögt, könnt ihr gerne abonnieren unten. Wenn ihr äh, ein Like da lasst, dann freuen wir uns sehr. Und wenn ihr am Ende dieses Videos unten einen Kommentar da lasst, dann würden wir uns sehr darüber freuen, wen wir denn noch so einladen sollen zu unserem Livestream. So, finally, we go to the first questions. I, I did some notes also and we come to that after the questions uh, from the chat. So, uh, I must look in the chat. Mm. Mr. Schlitzauge asks, why are you sparing the 10 pin with two hands at the moment and no more with one hand? It's a combination of a few things. I, uh, with the USB-C starting with the new rules, no extra holes and such, and it's developing to that. I can't have a thumb hole in a ball if I'm going to use it for first ball delivery. That was one of them. A second one is that on a good day, I wouldn't really practice, I'd throw up a spare shot at the 10 pin maybe three times in a six game block mm -hmm. having a good carry or so so my, my thumb going up and down in sizes and, and hand feeling different it, it felt more random and then also it's just just being able to throw the same shot at spares helps i do still 
sometimes, especially now with the until August, with the new rule, um, I do throw at the big splits one handed. Mm -hmm. Or if the pattern is really, really short and there's no oil in the middle, then I'll also do it. So if in, in, in future, if there's going to be a pattern that's like, we'll say 36 feet, not that much oil and not that much carry down the middle of the land, then I'll, I'll throw a ball throwing a thumb in because there's no miss in on, on the spare shots. So okay. I've been carrying a plastic ball and throwing it two handed. Okay. That's, uh... but, but number wise, I wouldn't say there's been any difference. I've, I've missed some spares here and there, but I've, I'm a pretty good spare shooter either way. Yep. And that this brings us to the next questions. Uh, how much will the new whole, uh, balance hole rule affect the pro level? It's gonna make a big difference, especially to us two-handers, because we have. There's been some tries already with, like in, we used to always have an extra hole. It's you know, a combination of of used to it, and also it makes the ball pick up easier, which is most of the times the thing we want or help want help as help anyway. Mm -hmm. So now there's going to be a lot of practicing and seeing what different drillings do. And there's going to be some balls drilled that, yeah, just to see what they do. Do you think it makes sense, this rule? Yes and no. It's, I understand what they're going after. And, 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 um, but like, I don't see, yeah, it is, it, I might be negative about it or I, I might not like it, but I, there's no point to have that opinion anyway, because that's going to be the rule. Yeah, that's true. Yep, yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. What to say? Um, because of or at, at the moment there is uh, Marcel ask uh, why did you spare so fast with one hand? Why was it so fast? Kind of the same thing, a combination of things. It just happened. I actually really don't know the reason. I happened to have balls. That had a hole that was close to where my thumb should be that was about the thumb hole and then i've always been pretty athletic so it just kind of happened it's it's yeah it, it looks like i use a lot of power but it, when i threw it like that i actually don't feel like i'm using that much power yeah it feels uh, it, it looks more powerful because most of the people are not able to do it and that's yes. that's the reason you are used to do it yeah. mm. and like uh, yes like when I'm throwing it as hard as I can, I can't hit it as much. But like when I'm throwing like 45, 47 kilometers an hour, I, I'm pretty accurate doing that. Yeah. So it's just, but it's just one of those things that kind of happen, and then it is kind of, it was kind of cool. So obviously, I'm not gonna stop doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, now I go. Oh, that's another one. Uh, what tips would you have to increase speed as a two-hander? Would you consider walking faster or more attention to this uh, to the power step? Uh, quicker steps. The feet are where the speed comes from. Everything else basically loses loses speed, or, or is is about maintaining speed. But that we've created every two-hander I've talked to and and what I watched and and I'm trying to make it piece by piece. It's Kind of like an airplane trying to take off or anything trying to accelerate it's it's it, ha it can't go max speed or, or max pump instantly because that's just gonna start like um make it bumpy so it's just picking up speed constantly in a good like um good picking up speed in, in like a smooth motion so how do you see the whole thing with the two uh, so pretty much you and jason bring in the two-handed game in the world the evolution i said and now a lot of coaches just um, trying to coach the two-handed game. What do you think about that? They, what you do naturally, and what they try to do with uh, physics and everything to explain it. Do you think that they do it the right way, or do you think it's uh, weird because you do it naturally? Uh, what do you mean? So uh, the question is. Uh, how is it when when you are one of the first guys who played this game, and now uh, a lot of coaches talking about this and try try to to uh, cut the game into into steps and then explain it to other bowlers? Do you think it's the right approach what they do? Uh, the saying that the speed comes from uh, feet. Oh, what do you mean? I'm yeah, sorry, I don't, whole... I'm not really getting what you mean. Yeah, it's uh, sorry. 
so I try to, uh, the question, what I want to know is pretty much, uh, from your perspective as, as one of the guys who bring in the two handed game, do you think the approach, what most of the coaches do to learn other players, the two handed game is the right way? It, anyway, if it's from speed, revolutions, uh, the power step. Be, I don't really know what they're teaching, but in, in, in any style, like power, actually one-handed power players like EJ Tacken and so, and, and two-handers, they are not as, not as different as, as you think or was, as, as it looks. So it's more of, of, of a question of having the basics. Like if, if you really slow down all the top, uh, top pros, one or two-handed, yeah, and slow down and take the basics. Everybody looks re reasonably similar. They have add their own flavor to it, but everything pretty much, the basics are the same. Okay. Like in anything, any sport where you have to do something and repeat it a lot, normally the the ways to do it, the easiest to repeat, those styles are normally going to get the best. Okay. It's just of because especially in bowling, it just happens so quick, especially when thinking that we're carrying a 15 pound ball, a seven kilo object yeah. that, that, that in, in relation to our body weight, when it's uh, got a movement, uh, sorry, um, sorry. Yeah. When it's moving, it's, it's a lot of heavier actually than seven kilos. And if it, there's side movements with that one, it's a lot of harder to repeat do yeah. the same thing. Yeah. And that brings us to Marcel's questions. He asked, uh, he's playing now for, with one hand for 10 years. And he's thinking about to uh, playing with two hands to switch. Does it make sense? It, I would have to see him more. Like it, it's more a question of how does he look, how his, his game looks like, and what what his goals are. A lot of people change the two hands, thinking it's the easy way out to getting a lot of reps. Yes, it might help you, but it also might be a good tool to do for a while, and then go back to one handed to learn where your hand might be might should be for more evolutions. Okay. In, two, in two handed, the biggest difference where we get the revolutions is because the hand is under the ball, so at the release there's a lot more time for the hand to give revolutions for the ball. Yep. And this is then uh, Thomas asks, how do you aim or target? Because the most two handers have power but trouble with accuracy and consistency. Oh no, two handers don't aim. Huh? Just ask anybody. Two handers don't aim. No, a serious note. I depends on what I'm bowling on. If if it's really hard. I'm gonna have a spot at the arrows and spot at the break point, and I'm imagining a line. So it's like but, a three-point targeting. What Slovinsky says. Yeah, it, it's it's yes and no. It, it's a blend of, but yes, okay. yes. And like any well, any pattern, the break point is the most important part anyway. Yeah. But when it's easier, it's it's more of yeah. I know that's the line, and I bowl enough that I I know I'm aiming, but on my own kind of way. It's it's not the at the arrows. It's it's just a line. I need know I need to hit. Okay, so um, and Hexa asks, is it necessary to slide or can successfully plant your foot? You can play either way, but if, if there's no slide at all, it's going to create a lot of tension for your ankle and your knee. So that can easily be an um, injury risk later on. But there's, there's no either way. like there's no right or wrong bowling way. Okay. And actually, we have a really good bowler from Sweden. He's 25, I think, 26 now, Philip Wilhelmsson, and he plants it, and he, he's really good, too. Yep, okay. I don't slide either. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, <laughs> so, uh, either in Germany, they're so slippery there sometimes that I would just prefer to stomp it. It's, it's pretty, that's, that fact is pretty fascinating. In Germany, the, the approach is very slippery. But most of the German players think they're really stucky. So, and yeah, every, that's because they're used to it. Yeah. And every time we have a big tournament like Euro Challenge or Trek Open or something like this, then uh, the, the pro says, oh my God, it's so slippery. I sell a lot of souls then, <laughs> especially the number two yeah. and the orange heels yeah. and something. And all the German players are, oh, that's so sticky. I need a 10. Or, yeah, um, it is. I've played enough German League to know that they, they use the uh, certified or whatever kind of products that to keep the approaches nice and so, but it makes them so, so slippery. So during Euro Challenge, they, they don't do it for that week and it gets closer to what we're used to yep. and which for Germans then is really sticky. Yes, it is. So Marcel asked, what was the toughest oil pattern you ever played on? 
I would have to say it was a 37 foot at the U.S. Open this year. That was just brutal. Like gutter didn't hook, and like myself, I threw plastic, not at the head pin, but from like nine boards straight, basically towards the bucket. And then it, it was hard. But and another kind of hard was the double burn on, on U.S. Open a few years earlier, because the oil was just gone. It was just it just wasn't there. Okay. So it was a different kind of of a hard. The pattern by itself wasn't too hard for the get-go, but it was just because it was that beaten down. Okay. Now I come back to to a little earlier on in your career. What? How difficult was it for you to uh, get the status for as a good player with your technique, especially in the beginning when it's n nobody knows? It. I don't, I never thought about that. I'm I'm stupid enough or cocky enough or whatever you want to use for the word for it that. I didn't really care. I just went and bowled. And I'm really fortunate that I was decent from a really young age that I got to, and lucky enough that I got to travel with all the good players from Finland, like uh, Petri Manon and Pasi, Lasse, Mika, Kimmo, and all these guys. I traveled together with those guys for a good part of 10 years, and Yoni and, and, and Sami. And so I, I learned so much just being with them. Okay. What did uh, what did you think when you see uh, that a guy like Jason Belmonte with the same technique come up? It was a weird. I think it was the World Youth at Thailand when we saw the first time. Might have been a little earlier, but I don't know the early two thousands. And because uh, the whole situation is kind of weird, that we've started bowling pretty much the same time. We're pretty much the same age. He's a few months older, and and then we started getting success. At reasonably early age, and around the same time. So, and then for a good few years there, we bowled a lot together in uh, in Europe because the European tour was really big then. And that yeah, was kind I, of one of the stepping stones. I make notes in 2007 Istanbul Open. I was there too. You played the final against him. I think that was pretty much the first final on EBT with two two-handed, right? Uh, might have been actually. I think we bowled before already in Greece at the Euro Challenge. Okay. I think we ended up bowling six, seven or eight times in Europe in step ladders at the European Tour events. I, but I, I think when I look at from today's perspective, it's pretty crazy when you imagine that uh, two different continents, same age, getting good at the same time, and then competing against each other. That's that's fascinating. Yeah, I think it was really weird how that it like that had it. It really hadn't happened before. Yeah, there's been no thumbers and two handers since. I mean, it's it's really weird. Yeah. So, um, what do you think about Weber Cup? Are you planning to get back to it, or? Oh, that's played? the plan. I have to be there. I hope Dom picks me. Ah, okay. So Dom is the captain right now, and he picks. Dom's the, the captain. I think the rumor is that we're going back to five, but I I don't know. I hope so. Okay. Because. We've, it's been a four-man team a few years now, and, and that turns out, uh, ends up being a lot of the same matches happen again. So five-man team, as it used to be, just more variation, and, and it makes it more fun. Okay. Um, now I go back in time with to the US Open. Was it surprising for you, 2004? Oh, it was a big surprise. I had no clue what's going to happen. The year before, I didn't do so great, though. I was consistently terrible. No, then, I was. Then you make the show and play against Walter Ray. Yeah, it was a cool experience, by the way. But I'll I'll go from the get go. So oh three, I went there with Yoni and a few others, just to learn, just to see what it is. And I, I think I had 120 under, 120 under, 120 under. So I was equally shit every block. <laughs> then the next year, uh, I traveled with uh, Peter Salon and Sami Konsteri. Pasi and Yargatia. No. I think it was the five of us. And uh, we decided we we're going to bowl the Masters. Have a week off because the Masters. No, sorry. Either way, it was the US Open at, uh, in LA, uh, the Masters in Reno, and then it was a week off. So we, we didn't have to go anywhere basically in between. It was close by. So, and so bowl good two big tournaments and so. And then Oddly enough, I happened to make the show. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and that was uh, I think also Randy Peterson was the commentary and uh, it's it's funny it was um, then now I go back to some questions in the chat mm. what's your opinion on lefty two-handers that are only using urethane balls I love to play urethane if from... it was left-handed I would also uh, bailing two-handed I would also use basically only urethane balls yeah there's no point because it's, it's it's a bad it's like it's a hard question like not question question but like a hard situation because a lot of people say it's easy on the left that's, that's the wrong word to use for it it's 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 more simple like if 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 a lot of the top tier bowlers they could bowl up eight or so ish all day obviously they would be striking a lot because from that angle you're striking more because you're not giving away the pocket as much and and, and such and bowling straight with the urethane, you don't split as much. People would just, it's just, the situation is hard because people keep saying it's too easy. No, it's just more simple. Yeah, they break it down simpler. I, I, I see it the same way. Because uh, here he says, uh, how's Jesper, for example, able to play urethane on basically every pattern with success? He has not success on every pattern. He has decent success, but it's, it's like I said, it's, it's more of because a lot of the patterns are reasonably hard. But if you're playing reasonably straight, like if, if the gutter, sorry, not the gutter, but if the outside hooks or it, it's not out of bounds, then you're always the ball's always going to be in play. Mm -hmm. and then it's just if, if the pattern's easy enough, then the urethane is out of play because urethane doesn't strike as much as the reactors. But if it's if it's hard, then obviously it's going to be great for them because they strike enough and they keep the ball in place so they don't split nearly enough and the transition bowling that straight and, and such anyway already helps but when the pattern's getting tougher it's uh, a disadvantage also right because the righties uh, just with the high ref rate uh, open up the lanes if, different. If, yeah if the lanes open up yes yeah so uh I'll go back to actually one one thing about the us open that i think is really super cool so in the show there was it was Barnes, Walter Ray, Brian Voss, and Pete Goeber, and Pete ended up winning. Yep. And uh, actually I got a got a shirt from Walter, but I also got a shirt from Pete, and it was the shirt that he won in. So I have that shirt he won in that tournament. That to me is really cool. That's something uh, that that yeah. What can I say? That's a pretty cool cool item to have. Oh, it definitely is. It, it was his third or fourth one. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that's that's a cool thing. So Patrick asks, you, "Will you ever play German league again?" I would wouldn't mind to. It, okay. we, I've had a blast. I bowled for a good, maybe four or five years. Yep. But then, because it's not generally the the, uh, well, I made the switch to bowling full time on tour, and with the tour schedule, it was basically impossible. Mm -hmm. And if there was was a free weekend for me to bowl, then normally we had Swedish league at the same time, and then it kind of trumps for me because it's pretty big here too. Yeah, Swedish league. Uh, but yeah, we, I like to bowl German league. And um, yeah, so now I come to your switch to Columbia 300 when you you were pretty long at storm and then you switched to columbia 300 and then you get the sales manager in europe then the buying came in from brunswick to columbia what is your position now i'm just a bowler now right now we'll see what it turns out to be it was kind of still trying to figure out what is going to happen and so and then this happened so now kind of everything's kind of on ice okay so but you are with uh c300 and uh as a player yeah, Yes. Okay. And we will see what happens in the future. Because yes. It's been it's been a kind of a hectic, you could say, a few months with bowling. So I changed first of August after being on on Stone for almost 14 years. But it was just the timing and then like I was still a full-time bowler, but I could on my downtime I could work. The title was kind of bigger than actually was at the time, but it was it was more a future kind of thing. Yep. And then the, this thing came uh, the sell, the sale came out of out of nowhere and it kind of changed things yeah and we will see what happens in the future we will yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm just hope hopefully bowling will survive 
close to 100% because there's going to be a lot of smaller sports that this is going to do bad on because I'm worried of how many of the older people will come back to bowling after this, for example. Okay. Where do you, where do you see bowling in 10 years? Don't know. <laughs> I, I don't even want to guess after this because this could this could kill bowling. This could kill, kill so many. Like I don't know. This is the economy is going to be bad for a year or two or three, I'd say at least after the corona. So it, we'll just have to see. We'll we'll know way more in in a year. Mm. But now in the first few months, I don't think anybody can guess what's going to happen. Yeah, I do like what what. Uh, Coley Edison with Bolero is doing he actually gave us a chance again, but I just I just hope everything survives basically. Okay, so Thomas asked a question that you already answered. So Thomas, are there, uh, are there some specific balls to suggest for a two-hander like Eurotain or strong asymmetric? So he answered before that. Uh... It's more a question of matching your guy, it, it, your rev rate and speed. It's not a, about two-handed or one-handed. I could I could try and and say yeah there's 200 balls and there's 100 but no it's it's just physics it's it's more comes down to your rev rate and your speed and and which way your ball rolls and so so it's it's in general the more forgiving balls obviously are going to be better for two handers that not so quick off the spot right yes so like like a strong symmetric like you said before your fan so that's pretty much the balls yeah or so you you got control because because the rev rate normally only two-handed, it's it's plenty enough to kick the pins. Yeah, it's not that often you go for the ball that's gonna go longer and hook the most. Yeah, that's true. So I have uh, in every stream uh, when I have guests, I have some quick questions. Like uh, okay. I, I will I will just start with it. What's your favorite food? My favorite food, homemade food. I go by stages. Like it, there'll be a food that I haven't eaten for a while, then then I'll crave for it. But in general, homemade food, and then I actually love a lot of different Asian foods. Okay. What's your favorite beverage? A cold one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that also goes by a day. No, I, I don't know. If I have to pick just one, it'd probably be water. Okay. Your biggest win? My biggest win? Yeah. Uh, World Open in Japan. And your biggest fail? Biggest fail? I don't know. What should I say? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> if we had one billion dollar, what would you do? Make my money work, donate a lot of it, and uh, just get a good situation. And like, I, I don't, I, I don't want that many. Okay. I would just, that would just put my family in a kidnapping risk and and whatever. I, I'd like, I don't want that much. Like 10, 10 million euros, fifteen million would be perfect. Your idol in the youth. In the youth, but when I was young, yes. Now, when I was young enough, it was Mika and Mikko Kartinen. He, he was also a ball. Uh, he used to bowl for the national team and such, and he was a power player. And then when I grew up and started watching PBA, like we didn't have the shows, so when I started watching online mm -hmm. or, or so, it was Norm because he's so versatile and he's like the whole package. Like he's so into it and and all that. And obviously, I love watching Pete and too. Yep. But Norm, if I had to pick one, it, it'd be Norm. What's your idol now? Norm. <laughs> your biggest supporter? Uh, my mom. Your best buddy on tour? Uh, it's the group of us. Jesper, Martin, Dom, Stewie. Okay. So the, the that's pretty much the gang back in the European tour styles. Uh, times. Yeah, we used, it used to be Dom, Martin, Stu and I. And then Jesper got good enough <laughs> or old enough. He's still only 25. So no, because yeah, we've young. been, Dom, Martin and Stu, we've been, we've known each other for good, almost 20 years. Yep. Your favorite sports besides bowling? I like to watch some snooker. I like to watch some golf. I've never really played golf. And because I, I'm, I, I don't dare to start because I'm pretty temperamental. So I'm pretty sure I would break too many clubs until I get good enough. So I need when I start, I need to start properly. But and uh, well, that's about it. Okay. And now the last one. 
uh, what would you do different if you could start your bowling career again? I would know about physics. Sorry, more about body physics, like how bodies work and, and, and uh, take care of my body and such. But I, I wouldn't change much. I've been fortunate enough to see a lot of things. And if I changed something, I'm sure something would have got different. So it's it's more of, of being smart enough on, on rehab, or not rehab, but like rehabilitation of, of sorry, um, take care of my body after the squads when traveling and so, because when traveling, the it takes about twice as much time to just recuperate. Okay. Okay. That's... Um... And then I, I have a uh, huge thing with uh, that was uh, we talked a lot in the last streams about it. How do you learn about ball motion? What do you need and uh, who explained it to you or was it just experience? It's kind of where I started when I was so lucky to travel with all the Finnish. Well, bowling a good team from a young age. I started like bowling the bigger tournaments and then bowling the league and then that turned into getting some success. I started traveling and bowling at the Europe, European tour events and Swedish tour events. And it's just, you learn it takes a lot of time. You have to see a lot of balls go down the lane. You, see, you need to see a lot of styles. You cannot learn in the one center. Yeah. And it's just, it's, that's the hardest part of bowling. And if you need to tell somebody, okay, you need to learn ball motion, how do they look uh, on what piece of the ball do they need to look on? You start to look where the ball starts to slow down, where the break points are and what the balls do in pins. Like there's this, you can get this answer of me out of a half a minute. No problem. <laughs> we talk about it for how long as well. No, it's, it, but if I have to say one key thing, yeah. when the ball picks up on the line. Okay. When it slows down. Okay. Tinker8 has a question. What kind of ball would be your dream ball? The one that never misses. <laughs> yeah, the one that strikes every time. <laughs> Though that'd be boring. I, I, I'll take 10 out of 12 every game. I'll be fine with that. Oh, okay. Like Jesper, when he has it. Yeah, that's the Jesper number. So I want that number. Yeah, when he can strike. I remember back in, uh, I don't know, two or three years ago at the Euro Challenge. He was playing like one squad and everybody know, okay, he will win. Yeah, in general also, like, your, your, not your challenge. Dream Ball has always been pretty good for lefties and in there, if, if they have it, they, they, they have it. Yep. And like I said, it's, it comes back to also the thing that it's so much simpler that if, 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 if the left side has it, then it's kind of hard for, the, for it to go away. Okay. Yeah, so in the chat is not a lot of traffic right now. We still have plenty of viewers, but uh, no more questions now. Uh, but uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Then you have to get creative. Yeah, I will. I, I'm trying now. <laughs> um, My uh, fiance here says that Francesca wrote a question before. What other sports do I do? I don't do any sports really on a teams or anything. Okay. But I play basic, especially now I'm done, done paddle tennis weekly with my uh, bowling buddies. And actually two of them I go and, and play um, uh, frisbee golf. I've just started. I need to get my own pucks and other discs. Because uh, it's really, it, it's kind of like a mo uh, sport that you don't really feel like you're doing any really conditioned workouts. Because you're just having fun in the out when, when the weather is great. So okay. it's, it's kind of like win win win. You also uh, said before you played like, um, what is it, uh, frisbee golf, right? Yes, I, I played that today, and that, that yeah, this, sorry, disc golf, yes. I, I never see that before. And it's, uh, it's, it, it didn't really exist 10 years ago. Okay. It kind of started, but now it's getting more and more popular, and now in Sweden and Finland it's getting bigger, especially now when it's an easy sport where you can still go out there and you're staying safe, you're playing, you are far enough from people that you can just go and do it. Okay. So it's, it's picked up a lot this year, I would, uh, I would assume. Okay. Now some questions coming in. <laughs> uh, what's your opinion on urethane on house pattern? 
Is it my favorite house pattern? No. Uh, what's your opinion on urethane balls on house pattern? Oh. Does it make sense? I well, house pattern could mean a lot of things. If you mean an easy house pattern, it doesn't really make sense. It makes sense till till you can until you can strike yourself. But you're creating so much more back end uh, transition that the ball that the ball is just it feels like everything's going to be on ice soon. And like I want to see whoever asked the question, bowl house league like that being the only guy with urethane, and then next time ask three more people use urethane with you, and then the next time ask six more people or four more people or whatever. Mm -hmm. The difference it's humongous. Yeah. So if you're the only one doing it, yes, it's it's fine. But if there's more of you guys, you're gonna be in trouble soon. Okay. Alter Schwede asks, out of Jesper, Dom, Martin, and Stu, who's the most annoying to travel with? <laughs> I have, I have. Annoying uh, at times. <laughs> we can all be pretty annoying at times, but uh, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's none of them, none of our like, actually in the in the ball tour tour world, there's not nobody that's nearly that annoying. Obviously, when you get people at the wrong times, they're going to be annoying, and you're going to see it annoying or so. But like, I don't. It isn't anybody that really pisses me off. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Sebastian asks, uh, what was you thinking about when you been that long not in a TV show? Was it was it hard for you or was it just uh, keep going? Keep going. Obviously, it gets harder the longer it goes. But it's, it's, it's a question of why it happened was because life happened and I was too lazy of taking care of my body. Like I'd be home, be traveling so much. When I got home, I'd get sick every time because she was in kindergarten. And being like, when you travel, you're way more open to diseases, mm -hmm. and they would just cherish. So I'd be, I'd be sick from three to six days every time I came home from a long trip. So that with time, then just developed to that I was in poor, poor shape. But now, finally, I've been able to actually work on it for a few years properly and like Ida is old enough that I actually feel like I can go out and do stuff even though when she's home. Okay. It was just more that life happened and I wanted to be with my family as much as I could when I was home. Yeah, that's cool. What was uh, the most difficult when you be first in the first year when you be full-time bowler? I can't say that I remember but I would assume it's it's the all the new stuff. Hmm. But like I never really I try to feel as much home as, as, as I can as quick because I know that's the best way. You have to feel as comfortable as you can. So I was just trying to pick up what, what's the thing of on tour, like what you need to think of. And like, so mm. so it's just learn learn quickly what the routines are for everybody and, and such and then get into it. What's your pre-shot routine? There's a few things. Like I try to drink in a similar way, similar amounts or so. Like getting in habits because if you don't drink enough in the day also your head gets a little uh, off balance so i try and get that in there i might talk to somebody like it, it's more in the but then wipe your hand oh sorry wipe your wall kind of the same way pick up it kind of similarly way and and like there's all those small things on the way and you're walking a lot during a squat <laughs> you're walking <laughs> next lane five lanes back. Sometimes, yeah it, it's, it's it's a combination of of, of trying to pick uh, like it's so important to kind of know where what's happening on the lens, what the guys are doing to them. So, because in the first two, three frames is where most of the pins are done pretty much. Like if you go in blind then uh, and get that split instead of like throwing a great shot that you think is a great shot, but it's in the wrong spot, then you lose yep. more pins on it. And you're pretty much Obviously, the first... Sometimes, sorry? You were pretty much the first uh, player I saw laying down on the approach to see the lines on the lane. Oh, that's because in some some centers, like some friction, uh, sorry, not friction, some lane surfaces with the lighting, you can actually see yeah. the lines or especially if, if it's later in the block when there's been more lines, like more wear and tear on, then you can actually see it in a lot of places. Uh, did you play 15 parts all the time? I've played 15 and 60. I didn't play 16 for that long. I probably should have done a little earlier, but it's it's because in Europe it's hard to get 16s. So that was always my kind of why I didn't do it. Then I went to 16 
on when I was on Storm at the tour. But with with I, uh, I'm on Star Alliance, so I I fly with United from the US, and they were really strict. If I even have a three ball toad with two 15s and a 16, it, they would still quite often bitch that it's overweight, being 51 pounds or 50.6. So it was okay. just more of that reason that I kind of went back to 15. And, and what then, was yeah. Yeah, cause just because they want to try and get that money for you of, of half a kilo, because yeah. they're having a bad day or whatever. Now they need so I went more. 15, but I, I still, uh, I use like all my urethanes actually right now are 16. Okay, is there, is there a difference? It's they, yeah, they they strike a little more, but actually in in purple hammer and black hammer, it's the the numbers are a little different. The difference differential is is double, so it gives more flare. So it's more what I look for. Okay, what was the fastest you ever thrown? That I know on 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 a, on a speed radar like that is fifty three point something, but I I don't I really don't know because none of them are really reliable. Yeah, because it's so fast. I remember back in at Vienna Open on lane one and two, you pick up the ten pin out of the gutter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's been a few pins in the gutters and you know, on other lanes, and uh, I've had a few come on the approach. But actually, once in Sweden, I had a a pretty good one on lane three. I made the 10 pin, it landed on the lane, slid all the way to the approach, then rolled on the approach to lane four, back to lane four. Really? Yeah, <laughs> so that was weird that it, yeah, it went to lane four, but it didn't go with the gutter. It actually went on the approach and went back. <laughs> so Fr Franzi asks, uh, what is your favorite bowling alley? Have you ever been? Uh, <sighs> there's a few. All the big ones that I look are made for the tournament bowling. Like Dream Ball Palace looks amazing. Food's great, and so Tali is well. It's made for tournament bowling. It's the whole. It's not really that big. It's 36 lanes. It's European standards. It's big, but it's it's just and the whole atmosphere of the tournament and and the people are actually really annoying and and so it's the whole package. But obviously Reno is is Reno, and then but it's and Bayside Bowl. I gotta say is pretty nice too. Even though it's only twelve plus eight lanes, mm -hmm. but that's that's not because of the lanes. It's more of the whole combination with the people there. Okay. And so. Do you want to tell the people something? So. Sure. Why not? Actually, uh, Vienna was always a nice great place to be. To also even just there's a whole whole thing, the atmosphere and the party and all that. And then now I start thinking about because I haven't bowled in Europe for basically for ten years. Barcelona was always nice. Yes, Barcelona yeah. was great, with the but it's yeah, also it's... good located and everything. Yeah, it was just too small for the tournaments. True, but other than that, it was it was phenomenal. But it like so it's it's always kind of the combination of, of the people there and the, the organizers and, and all that. Yeah, yeah. The, obviously the scenery and and where we at like San Marino is also, also great, and that uh, the scenery around there is is phenomenal. Yes, that's true. Hopefully, uh, Italy and San Marino get good off, out of this crisis. crisis. I hope the whole world gets good out of this. It's, uh, yeah, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So, I think that's pretty much it. Do you want to tell the people something you want to say? or? Yeah, I'll say a few things. First, in bowling, there's no, no cutting corners. It's just practice, practice, practice. And trust me, spares are really important. When you know you can spare, everything turns a lot easier. But uh, give myself a follow on Instagram, wherever, social media, Columbia 300. And now that we're with the Browns, we got seven brands to throw these balls. Like, I've only had a few months to throw the new Brunswick balls. The co mm -hmm. covers and cores, are there, they're pretty good, actually. I've mainly, mainly been drilling only Brunswick balls on tour, actually. And now, just before this happened, we also had two new balls from Columbia coming out that I'm excited to throw again soon-ish, whenever this lockdown, lockdown stop, stops. Okay. Uh, so there's there's going to be a lot to uh, try around and fool around with. Yep. We will we will link your channels, uh, social media, Instagram and Facebook in the Thank description down below. Oh, and one more thing. It's never stop having fun while bowling. Because, like, I like I like personally to like to challenge myself when, in, when I'm doing a practice. At the end, I'll want to double with every ball I'm practicing with or strike every ball from pocket or whatever. 
yeah. just to challenge my brain and want me to come back again the next time to to get used to it and learn it and everything yeah. that's that's and it, it just gives your brain that little reward and like when you do something that you put your challenge in, into you it, it's a chemical reaction it's happiness and that makes you like it more yeah so thank you very much Oscar, for your time no it, problem it's a pleasure to have you here it was pleasure a pleasure we really appreciate i hope uh, the, the viewers enjoy it and uh, hopefully we see us soon uh, your challenge track open whatever it happens or maybe you're in the same position as you've been in, at ebi <laughs> then we see us pretty we'll see. soon never know yeah you never know i'm not worried i'm stupid so i'll always find something yes and so this uh, year actually is that's it up about seven years ago and not our home bones are now the one before lane two ah that's cool <laughs> Started her early, but her she she didn't follow my footsteps. She, she don't, don't like play, football. no. No, she bowls about now a game games too at times. Okay. When I force her in. But uh, she don't want to do it by her own. <laughs> she likes to do skateboarding and sorry, uh, kickboarding, and uh, she likes to sing and draw a lot more. She is really artistic. <laughs> cool. Cause she gets that from mom. But uh, your your wife uh, also bowls, right? She used to. Then she lost to me, so she quit. <laughs> she's listening to, so she's laughing. Yeah, I understand that. No, she she used to be really good. She was one of the best female bowlers. Yeah. So, actually, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much again. We appreciate. And, no problem. Uh, to all the viewers, you can subscribe to the channel down below in the description. And uh, also, if you want to help us uh, with the channel, down below is a link. So, Osku, take care of yourself. Uh, we stay in touch you for too. everything. And okay. say hello to your wife. And thank you very much. No problem. Thanks, guys, for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.